just getting started with my skincare routine. I got a little laundry going, the usual routine. Last weekend, I cracked into this Hydro Boost Hydrating, I'm gonna call it Hydrating Gel Cream. Hydro Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry. This is a long standing favorite of mine. So I started reading that book about the history of the grocery store, and it has sucked me in. <laughs> Y'all know I love wandering around grocery stores, and this person's, at least their father, the author, shares my love of that as well. It's a really fascinating book all about the history of groceries and how grocery stores evolve from just like general stores all the way up to, you know, modern supermarkets with mass refrigeration. It's actually really interesting. It's a pleasant read. It's not really technical or anything. We're supposed to have a heat wave this week. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I'm ready for it. Speaking of which, the power went out the other night briefly and like I didn't even realize it. Usually I wake up when the power goes out. I didn't realize it and when I woke up I freaked out because my Vornado fan, which I have running 24-7, was off. <laughs> I was like, I felt like, am I losing my hearing because I'm so used to hearing that sound? It's really confusing when that happens because you wake up and all the clocks are like blinking. You don't really know what time it is. One thing I am still not clear on to this day, like, if it was an urban legend or not. When I was growing up, I was always told that if it was lightning out, you were not supposed to take get in the shower because you could get, the lightning could come through the pipes and electrocute you. And that just seems like an urban legend. And I've never had anyone like confirm or refute if that is true or not. I mean, I was just taught that, like, showering was prohibited during a storm where there was lightning. <laughs> like I told you guys before, I was always one of those kids that was always questioning things. Um, not, and, and you know, I was raised like, you don't question adults, you just kind of like, only speak when you're spoken to, that kind of thing. But internally, like, I was always wanting to question everything, that's just how I am. And so I, as a result, I would frequently piss off authority <laughs> just because I'd be like, well, why exactly is that? <laughs> and they'd be like, because I said so. For example, as a child, I did not understand why we would need to learn to read an analog clock. Like, I just did not understand why I should be spending my time <laughs> learning how to read an analog clock. I was like really stubborn about learning how to read an analog clock. I just like refused to do it because I was like, why should I be learning this clock when we have digital clock, digital watches and stuff? Like, I could just, I, at the time I was like, I could just look at the VCR. Why would I need to read? read an analog clock and I was pretty stubborn about it too like I'm not learning how to read that stupid thing in my mind I'd be thinking what is I don't know where's the VCR I do know how to read one by the way but see now I could also be like why would I need to learn that I can just look on myself on my phone same thing with multiplication tables that was another thing where I remember being like I didn't understand the point of memorizing multiplication tables. Like I understood the principle of multiplication, why it was useful, why you needed to learn it. But I did not understand why we needed to be memorizing all of this stuff. Like why couldn't we just like use pen and paper or a calculator? Like what was the point? And they'd always be like, well one day you won't have a calculator. <laughs> and fast forward 2022, everybody's walking around with a calculator on them. <laughs> but yeah, I remember being really stubborn about learning my multiplication table. And I can remember there was this kid in my elementary school class who all the teachers like would rave about all the time, like put on a pedestal, because he had memorized all the names of the presidents. And it used to annoy me to no end how they would ooh and awe over this kid, like he was some kind of a prodigy because his parents had sat him down and made him memorize all the names of the presidents. Yeah, I don't know if this is a thing anymore, but when I was in elementary school, for sure, teachers made no, were like, did not hold back when it came to playing favorites. 
they absolutely played favorites. Like, you know, teachers would have, you'd have reading hour and the teacher would have, there'd be a book that the teacher would be reading out loud. And it'd be like in progress, she'd read to you for I don't know, half an hour on Thursdays or something. And it was like the oddest thing. She would have these girls come up who were like teacher's pets and give her a, a shoulder massage while she read the book. It was so weird. I can remember thinking like, they would stand behind her and massage her shoulders. It was like an honor to be able to be picked to do that. Like, so weird. Yeah, I remember that quite well. Because me questioning everything, I was obviously never picked for the masseuse role. Yeah, there were so many things that were went on in like elementary school and middle school back then that I feel like would definitely not fly nowadays. Like, we would get yelled at for just existing sometimes it felt like in school um like i remember we had this assistant principal in elementary school who had this like really booming deep loud voice sometimes we'd have assemblies in the cafeteria and you know how kids are in elementary school they're all going to be running their mouth as they get in to the assembly room and sit down and everything. And he would come in and he would just like start screaming, like yelling at us, sit down, shut your mouth. I mean, it was like full on something out of like boot camp. It was intense. <laughs> Intimidation. Yeah, and that would never fly these days. I feel like maybe it does, I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments if you were an educator. Do you scream at children in assemblies? He didn't scream. He, he like yelled and he had a really deep, loud, booming voice. And he was, I mean, for a child, in comparison to a child, he was like a big man too, like really tall. He had really large shoulders. I mean, he was intimidating. I was scared. <laughs> I was scared into my seat for sure. Update on the counterculture coffee. I can't remember the name of this particular blind I got, but it is good. All right, I got some questions about my French press. The brand is Badoom. Uh, yeah, I know people call it Bottom, but I call it Badoom because it's just fun to say Badoom, whatever. A viewer actually sent this to me, so I don't know where it's from. I imagine you can get them on Amazon, but this is one of the best ones I've had because the carafe keeps the coffee hot. Um, the first French press I think I had actually came from, surprise, surprise, where I get everything in my life, from a FabFitFun box. It was this Alfred brand, and it was also pretty good, but the, um, this part didn't last very long, whereas this one has lasted, I've had it, I feel like I've had this one for over two years now. I realized for the first time when I was editing footage that... The snowflakes have little Mickey, Mickey heads on them, <laughs> you know. This is the mug I mostly drink coffee out of, but the mug I drink my tea out of is this one. A viewer made this for me and I love it. This is one of the best mugs I think I've ever had because A, it's ginormous, B, it holds the heat in really well, See, it's got a smooth coating here, so it's pleasant to sip out of. D, it doesn't splash around because the body of the mug is large, but then up here it narrows. So that kind of helps reduce splashing. E, I like the handle. And F, there is a thumb rest. And that is so helpful because it helps keep it level when you're carrying the mug. This mug is brilliant. Speaking of all the summer feels, this candle you guys need. Pineapple ginger. I think it's become one of my favorites from Tuscany. Uh, it's so nice. It's that vacation kind of scent. I'm here at Levy Park. It's humid out, but it's a nice day. Looks like they have a garden. Let's check it out. No picking. The 
that eucalyptus. There's like a tomato plant there. It's over here. Dill. More tomatoes. Dinosaur kale. Little cherry tomatoes. Here's a big thing of kale. More tomato plants. Swiss shard. Looks good. Rainbow shard. Quite the medley of oh, veg. This looks like a hopscotch. Kind of. Hey guys, going for a little swim. I've got the new body glove bathing suit on. You guys are on an angle. I'm a terrible swimmer, so I got this kickboard so that I could just like float around. But I saw on Amazon they sell these floaty things that you can put between like your inner thighs to help you stay afloat while you swim. I kind of need that. Swimming is like my Achilles heel. Can't. I don't know. <laughs> so not my strength. I can't dive either. Like, I don't know. Those are, those are skills I don't have. I get freaked out by it. But the water in this pool is too shallow to dive for sure. It's a floaty pool. I should get one of those like pool floats for this pool. Let's see if I can carry you guys along with me while I swim. This is risky. <laughs> I need a, what is it called? Not a drone. I need a, um, there's a there. I was hoping that this would suffice to like put my knees on it. What is that kind of camera call that you can take underwater? Not a drone. Um, a drone's the one that flies around. What's it called? I don't know if it's just that it's been so hot today, or if this pool is actually heated, but it feels nice and warm. All right, we're putting the wind guard on my microphone to the test because there's a lot of wind, and so I don't even know if I'll be able to use this clip. Uh, yeah, it's about 6.30 now, and this is like the perfect time to be outside because... Whew. So, tip for you guys, if you do enjoy a dip in the pool, swimming in the pool, as soon as you get out, this is what I do, take your swimsuit off right away. Well, I mean, obviously not like by the pool, that would be weird, but uh, try and get out of the wet swimsuit as soon as possible because the wet swimsuit, it actually traps that chlorine water up against your skin and can lead to breakouts like on your rear end, your back. Um, so take it off and rinse the skin or just hop in the shower. 
um, yeah, that's what you should do. <laughs> uh, as far as your hair though, I don't get my hair wet in the pool. I keep it up in a, like a top bun. But um, if you do get your hair wet in the pool, rinse out that chlorine water as soon as you can. And then try and use like a chelating shampoo to bind up the, um, you know, keep the chlorine from glomming onto your hair. If you've got blonde hair, some pools actually can make your hair turn green. Yikes! Um, but the other thing about the hair in the pool water is it makes the hair strands even more susceptible to weathering uh, the pool water because it makes them kind of brittle vulnerable to UV rays which do weather your hair. This hair is just, you know, keratin protein. It's not like actual living thing anymore. But uh, yeah, the UV rays plus the chlorine, it really can do a number on your hair. Especially if you have color treated hair. If you have color treated hair though, I'm willing to imagine, I, I imagine you don't get your hair wet in the pool. I haven't been in ocean water in a long time. But comment below, those of you who live in Texas, what is South Padre like? Is that like a fun experience? I've always wanted to go there and see the sea turtles. I feel like, when is a good time to do that? I mean, I can look online, but I'm just soliciting feedback from you all instead because I'm lazy and not going to go Google it. I mean, I could go Google it, but there's so many other things I've got to Google, so you guys can help me. Uh, you have to be careful with Googling things. Not only, obviously, can you run into a lot of misinformation, although I imagine I can find accurate information on the turtle thing by Googling this, but is it just me? I find when I seek out to Google something, I go down this rabbit hole of like learning other things that are somewhat related. Like before you know it, I will be researching like the protein composition of turtle shells. It'll just like somehow interest me. Um, than hours and hours and hours to pass. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.